it going everyone? In this video I'm going to show you where to find and how to recruit all the companions in Fallout New Vegas. One thing that I want you to keep in mind is that most companions have additional quests that you can do to upgrade their perks. I'll add more information about that in the description. And with that being said, we're going to start things off with Veronica. She's super easy to recruit. You literally just have to talk to her. You'll find her at 188 Trading Post and her perk is going to be Scribe Assistant which is really useful. It basically turns her into a portable workbench, which will save you a lot of time kind of traveling back and forth and finding out where all of those are. She's also really useful as a melee fighter. She's a member of the Brotherhood of Steel, so that has its own advantages as well. girl from California with stars in her eyes and a pneumatic gauntlet on her hand. Let's hit the road, huh? The next one that we're gonna pick up is named Eddie. You'll find him in Prim at Nash's house. You're going to need a higher repair skill or kind of a mid-range science skill to pick this one up. So if your repairs are on 65, you can just go in and fix them no problem. If your science is 55, you can actually make their repair skill a little bit easier. Or you can fix them with one piece of scrap electronics, two sensor modules, and three pieces of scrap metal. His perk is going to be enhanced sensors, which will make it a lot easier for you to detect enemies. Your third option is going to be Arcade Ganon. You'll find him at the Old Mormon Fort in Freeside, and your speech is going to have to be 75 or higher, or your intelligence is going to have to be 3 or lower to get him to follow you. I think he's one of the most useful companions in the game because he can really suit anyone's playstyle. His perk is called Better Healing, and what it does is it gives you 20% more health from all health items you used. You can stack this with other perks for huge rewards which are incredibly beneficial when you're in hardcore mode or doing harder difficulties. There are people out there to help, things to learn. Maybe not in that order, but let's get to it. The fourth companion that we're going to recruit is named Lily. You'll find her in Jacobstown, and keep in mind you will have to complete the quest, Guess Who I Saw Today, to have her as a permanent companion. To start the quest, all you're going to do is go inside the Jacobstown Lodge and speak to Dr. Henry. He'll let you know that you may want to ask her along, so just go outside and you'll see her to the right in front of the sign. She's incredibly useful for stealth-based characters because her perk, Stealth Brawl, is going to make all stealth boys last for 200% longer. So instead of around 3 minutes, you're going to get around 9. It's also going to make all your sneak attacks, if you hit a critical, do 10% extra damage. She has a tendency to go a little crazy, so you may have to control her a little bit. But if you do that, she's really, really useful. My, how you're grown up! So good of you to come visit your grandma! Ooh, those Night Stalkers! Always killing my big horners! It'll be nice to give them a piece of my mind! The next companion that we're going to recruit is named Raoul, and you'll find him in the Black Mountain Prison Building. So the first time you come to Black Mountain, Neil's going to run out and give you the quest Crazy Crazy Crazy. And if you haven't done it yet, it's a really good time to go ahead and do it, because once we get up here, there's going to be three buildings. There's going to be the prison building, and then the other two are ones that are related to that quest. So make sure you go ahead and just get those out of the way if you're up here. And for Raul, when we go in the prison building, there's going to be two terminals. One of them will give us the code for the other one so we can get the door open. And Raul's perk is regular maintenance, which is going to slow the time it takes your equipment to degrade by 50%. It's something that stacks with other perks that you can get as you level, so it can be really, really useful. Took you long enough, so can I go now? Andy's better to stay here. Let's go. Now we're going to move on to Boone. You'll find him in Novak, and he is a really, really untrusting type of companion. So the first time you meet him, you're going to have to go through a lot of talking just to get him to give you the quest. The quest is going to be called One for My Baby, and you will have to complete it before you can ask him to come with you. But even after you complete it, you're still going to have the same issues where you're going to have to go through a lot of speech to ask him. And once he joins you, you'll have the perk spotter, which isn't super, super useful. It'll make it a little bit easier to aim over long distances or at night. But it really comes into play a little bit more if you pair him up with Eddie. 
because then it's a little bit easier to aim and the enemies are a little bit easier to detect. So they're a good combo to have with you. <laughs> yeah. But this isn't going to end well. Fine. Let's get out of here. Now we're going to recruit Cass at the Mojave Outpost. The first time you speak to her, you'll start the Heartache by the Numbers quest, and she'll tell you to speak to Alice at Crimson Caravans. When you speak to Alice, you'll start the You Can Depend on Me quest, and you will have to deliver the invoice, because once you do, she'll send you back to Cass about buying out her caravans. Cass isn't really interested in selling, and she'll want you to help out a guy named Jackson. When you speak to him, you'll start the Can You Find It In Your Heart quest, and then after you finish it, you'll finally be able to recruit her as a companion. Her Whiskey Rose perk will raise your damage threshold by 2 to 9 points based on your survival skill when you consume alcohol, and it'll also negate the symptoms of alcohol addiction. The last one that we're going to recruit is a dog named Rex. You'll find him at the King's House of Impersonation in Freeside. And I think it's easier just to fast travel to the Strip's North Gate and work your way back that way than it is to go through all the different doors in Freeside. This is another one of those companions that you're going to have to do a lot of different things to get access to. So when you first speak to the king, he's going to give you the quest GI Blues. And you'll have to finish it and start the quest Nothing But a Hound Dog before you can get access to Rex as a companion. And if you want Rex to actually survive the game, we're going to have to take it one step further. So once you complete GI Blues and come back and talk to the king, you can kind of ask him a little bit more about Rex and his condition. He's going to let you know that he wants you to go talk to Julie Farkas at the Old Mormon Fort, and she'll tell you there's nothing they can do. You need to talk to Dr. Henry in Jacobstown. So now at this point in the quest, you'll have to report back to the king, and this is when we can get access to Rex as a companion. He'll give you the search and mark perk, which will make it easier for you to find things. He'll also kind of sniff things out on his own, which is interesting. But if you want him to survive throughout the entire game, we're going to have to find him a new brain. So Dr. Henry will let you know that there's several options you can choose from, and he'll put a bunch of different locations on your map. The first one I visited was Old Lady Gibson, and for 700 cabs or a barter skill of 70, she'll give you her dog's brain, and it'll give you increased attack damage. If you hunt down Violet and Violetta in the three card bounty quest, you'll get a brain that will increase your movement speed. And if you go to the Legion Hangout and battle Lupa in the arena, you'll get her brain, which will give you increased hit points. Regardless of which one you want to use, make sure you take it back to Dr. Henry and have him put it in. And then we're just going to go back to the king and let him know that everything's good, and that we want to hold on to Rex for a little bit longer. And that's really going to conclude things for this companion guide. Keep in mind that some companions won't travel together. If you put Lupa's brain into Rex, for example, then Rex and Boone will not travel together. And you can only have two companions with you at a time. One that's a human and one that isn't. So thank you guys so much for watching. We'll see you next time. Make sure to leave us some comments and let us know who your favorites are. Hold on to Rex for a little while longer. I'm sure he'd enjoy that. Was there anything else you wanted?